Good morning, this is uh, Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. It's July the 25th, and this is the Reach Out Ministry. If you have your Bibles, look with me in Exodus in chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. I'm going to start in verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out of the sheep of, from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses where they shall eat it. Now we know we have a song in our hymn book that says, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Well, this is when um, Pharaoh was gonna kill the firstborn of all the little Jewish boys and girls. Uh, that was under his jurisdiction, if you will. But Jesus turned the tables on them and said, you make a sacrifice and you put blood on the doorpost and above the door. And when I'm going to send a death angel, and if I see the blood, I'll pass over you. And so Pharaoh didn't know about this saying of what God had told the Israelites. So his firstborn died. So did many of the Egyptians. Well, virtually all of them. Their firstborn died because they had not applied the blood on the doorpost or above the door. Let's go down now in the same chapter, but pick up in verse 12. He says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So you see it applied further than just people. It said, I'll kill the firstborn of every beast. So that, that meant quite a few of their donkeys or goats, sheep. Whatever they had, the firstborn of them died also. He says, in the blood ye shall be to you for a token unto the houses wherefore ye are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And that's how we got the song. And he says, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you, when I smite the land of Egypt. And then in verse 14, he says, And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. You shall keep it a feast unto the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it at a feast by ordinances forever. So he said, This is something that started, and I want you to do it once a year to have the Passover in remembrance or memorial as to what I've done this night when I sent the death angel through Egypt. If you will, turn with me now into Mark in chapter 15. In Mark chapter 15, and we're going to start in uh, verse 3. And the chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. This is when they brought uh, Jesus before uh, Pilate. And he says, and Pilate asked them again, saying, answered thou nothing? Asking Christ, you, you're not saying anything? 
and he, behold, how many things they were witnessed against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. He wasn't taking a defending himself and arguing with them. Well, I hadn't done anything wrong. He was like a lamb. He kept silent, and he didn't say a word. Verse 6 says, Now at the feast he released unto them one prisoner whomsoever they desired. There was one named Barabbas that lay bound with them. He had made insurrections with him who had committed murder in the insurrection. Now, we're going to come another word here. Uh, Seduction and insurrection, and they both mean the same thing, really. It means that they are held against lawful authority. It's not lawful to go out here and just kill somebody, and that's what Barabbas was. He was a murderer, he killed someone. And it says in verse 8, and the multitude cried, Aloud, begin to desire him to do as had done unto them. But Pilate answered them and said, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? He asked him, said, Wouldn't you rather me let this man go, the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. The chief priest didn't like Christ Jesus. And he says, but the chief priest moved the people that they should rather release Barabbas unto them. So the chief priest stirred it up even more, saying, no, we don't want to release Jesus. We want you to release Barabbas. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, what will ye then do that I shall do unto him whom you call the king of the Jews? Ask him again. And then they said, they cried out again, crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, why, what evil hath he done? He didn't find anything wrong in what Jesus had done. Pilate had and they cried out even the more exceedingly, crucify him. So Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas and said unto them, and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified him. He, he kept telling them, I don't see anything that he's done worthy of being put to death. But the high priest stirred it up. Well, he's saying he's king of the Jews, and he's not. We want to have him crucified. If you will, turn with me in Luke in chapter 23. We're going to start in verse 16. Luke 23, verse 16. I will therefore chastise him and release him. So you see the four Gospels are telling pretty much the same story. And Pilate says here, instead of crucifying him, I'll just have him whipped. And let him go. For the necessity, he must release one of them at the feast. Because we read about the Passover, and it became customary after that that they would have the remembrance or memorial of the Passover. And part of the Passover was that one prisoner would be released. And that's why they were hollering, release Barabbas. 
and crucified Jesus. And it says in verse 17, For of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. So that, that was part of the, the deal they had. Uh, when we have the Passover group, we'll release one prisoner. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain seduction made in that city for the murderer which was cast into prison. We find here again they're saying that he was a murderer, and they had rather turned a murderer back out on the street than to let Jesus go, of whom Pilate said, I don't see any fault in this man worthy of being put to death. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again unto them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chasten him and let him go. And they were instant with their loud voice requiring that he be crucified and the voices of them and the chief priests prevailed. Now we already said the chief priests was the main one that stirred up this commotion because they were envious of Jesus Christ. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be required, and they released them into him for their seduction and murder was cast into prison whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. Jesus had never committed a sin in his entire life. Never. And they had rather have a murderer back out on the street than to allow Jesus to be set free. This is a hard saying, but in essence, that's what it took to get Jesus to be placed on a cross that had never sinned, who became our sin sacrifice that we might have eternal life if we believe on Jesus as our personal Savior. Had he not died on the cross, you and I would have no hope. None at all. And then we're going to turn over into John chapter 18. We're going to find out a little bit more about a Barabbas in this chapter than what we have found in the first two Gospels that we've read. John 18, starting in verse 38. Pilate said unto him, What is the truth? And when he had said this, he went out again into the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Not one single fault can I find with this man. How could he? He was perfect. Never had sinned in his whole life. But they, having a custom that should release unto you at the Passover, Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? And they cried again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber. What have we read so far? That he was a murderer. Now we find out he was also a thief. I want us to think about this real hard. 
You may have never killed anybody. You've never stolen anything. But there's a bit of Barabbas in each and every one of us. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And only by the death on the cross was our sins paid for through God's only begotten Son. He died. He was buried. Third day he arose. And Jesus lives. And he sits at the right hand throne of God, making intercession for you and I. We cannot deny that, folks. But Barabbas, I'm not saying this is in the Bible, but I'm speculating. He may have went to the Golgotha, which means the place of skulls, because that's where they always took him up there to hang him on a cross. Barabbas might have showed up. I'm not saying he did, but just imagine. He might have showed up and looked at the man on the cross that died for him, took his place where he should have been, but he wasn't. He was released. Barabbas, you were a thief. You were a murderer. And a man with no sin died in your stead. Now, he might have speculated how this man, though he had no sin, died in my stead. And that's exactly what Jesus did for each and every one of us. We may not have murdered. We may not have ever stole. But we've all sinned in some form or fashion. And Jesus died on our stead on that cross shed his blood, gave his body, that through believing upon him, we might have everlasting life. I don't know that it ever changed Barabbas, but I bet he, did, he didn't forget it. For the rest of his life, from time to time, he bound to have went back and thought on that day that where he should have been, a man died in his stead, died in his place. What a friend we have in Jesus, that he died for you and I, for Barabbas, for all the Barabbases throughout all the world. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and it's through the blood of Christ and the body of Christ, and by believing in God's only begotten Son, that we all have everlasting life. Where would I be had Jesus not died in my stead on that cross? Barabbas, he may have accepted Christ after a while. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. But I know he never forgot that day that a man died on a cross where he should have been. And he did not die. He was released. 